Hi, I'm Mrs. Moldovan, third grade teacher here at Elmonica, and I will be reading Ada's Violin, based on the true story of the Paraguayan Recycled Orchestra, Orchestra Philharmonica, based on landfill. Really interesting. Written by Susan Hood and illustrated by Sally Warren Comport. Ada's Violin, the re story of the Recycled Orchestra of Paraguay. Written by Susan Hood, illustrated by Sally Warren Comport. Ada Rios grew up in a town made of trash. Every morning at dawn, Ada heard the first garbage trucks rumble and roll down the road to Cactura. Beep, beep, beep. Backing into the landfill, they tipped their loads up and up and crash. The trash came tumbling down, 1,500 tons a day. Ada and her friends watched as the gancheros, recyclers, scrambled, tearing into plastic bags with long-handled hooks, pushing aside moldy produce, and grabbing anything they could recycle or sell. The going rates? Five cents for a pound of cardboard, 10 cents for a pound of plastic. This noisy, stinking, sweltering slum was not the most nurturing neighborhood. Ada watched, eyes wide, but she didn't say much. And yet, she liked to imagine each garbage truck was a box of surprises. One never knew what might be inside. Her father had found appliances, toys, perfume, and antique watches. One woman even discovered a small box full of gold jewelry. Little did Ada know there was a bigger surprise waiting for her in the landfill. Every day when Ada's parents went to work, Grandmother Miriam cared for Ada and her little sister Noelia. Grandma loved to sing rock and roll songs from the 1960s. <clears throat> the girls grew up to the tunes of the Beatles, Simon and Garfunkel, and Creedence Clearwater Revival. Ada loved to sing, too, but only when no one was listening. Ada's dad brightened the night with stories and songs of great musicians. He turned up the radio and pointed out the sounds each instrument made. Ada heard one above all others. Zing! went the strings of the violin. When the girls started school, Grandma returned to work as a recycler, collecting bottles and cans in the city. Classes let out at noon. Young Ada was in charge of Noelia until her parents were done with work. At first, the girls stayed home, playing with Grandma Median's doggies and making sand cakes in the dirt. Soon, they joined their cousins, playing hide-and-seek or a game of handball in the streets. In time, they ventured farther afield, walking down to the bodega to get candy. But Ada noticed the teenagers hanging out in the alleys, grumbling about life in the landfill looming ahead. What would happen to them, to her, to her little sister? She watched as the older kids turned to gangs and got into fights. Se enseña violín, guitarra, violoncello, los sábados a las ocho a.m. Fabio Chavez. One day, when Ada was 11 years old, her grandmother saw a sign posted on the wall of a chapel. Violin, guitar, cello, taught Saturdays at 8 a.m. Fabio Chavez. How Grandma had learned to, longed to learn music. Too late for her, maybe, she thought, but not for her granddaughters. She signed them up without asking. Them are their parents. Ada's heart sang out. Thanks to her abuela, she could leave her worries behind and learn to play. At the first class, the teacher, Fabio Chavez, had three guitars and two violins to share. Ada chose a violin right away, but ten children had signed up. Frustrated, Ada and her friends found that there were not enough instruments to go around. And there was a bigger problem. Everyone quickly realized that the children would need to practice at home. But it wasn't safe to be seen with an expensive instrument in Catura, where a violin is worth more than a house. 
Watching the children play amid broken glass and rusty metal, Senor Chavez knew he had to do something. He remembered a band called Les Luthiers that made its own instruments. That was it. He asked Nicolas Cola Gomez, a ganchero and carpenter, for help. Senor Gomez found a discarded drum with a big hole in it. What could he use to fix it? He picked through the trash and found an old x-ray film. Would that work? It did. Senor Gomez kept experimenting and others, like Tito Romero, helped. Inventing instruments wasn't easy, but they fiddled around, discovering what materials hit just the right notes. They transformed oil drums into cellos, water pipes into flutes, and packing crates into guitars. Soon, there were enough instruments for all the children who wanted to play. Ada chose a violin made from an old paint can, an aluminum baking tray, a fork, and pieces of wooden crates. Worthless to thieves, it was invaluable to her. It was a violin of her very own. Senior Chavez set up a strict schedule of three-hour lessons. The class had no classroom, so they played outside, despite the 100-degree heat and sudden downpours. At first, Ada and the others struggled. Sharps and flats clanged and clashed. Playing an instrument is a process. It doesn't matter if one is rich or poor, ugly, fat, thin. You cannot learn to play an instrument overnight, Senor Chavez told the children. Some kids decided it was too much work and gave up, but not Ada. After lessons, she would practice at home, sometimes two hours a day. In time, the screeches, twangs, and tweets hit all the right notes. This, their class became a small island where Chavez taught them to respect themselves and one another. Be kind. Always say please and thank you. Say you're sorry. Be dedicated when you commit to something, Senor Chavez told the children. Soon, the ragtag crew of kids learned to tune in, to listen to one another, to band together. The recycled orchestra was born. From then on, there was something new in the air in Catura. Gancheros trudging home from the landfill might lift their heads to hear the sounds of Ada's violin, or the strain of Bibi's cello, or the strum of Noelia's guitar. A symphony of sound helped to lift them beyond the heat, the stench, and their aching backs. With her violin, Ada could close her eyes and imagine a different life. She could soar on the high, bright, bittersweet notes to a place far away. She could be who she was meant to be. As Ada's skill grew, so did her confidence. Once timid, she now took center stage playing solos. She helped teach the younger children, too. Her teachers and fellow students took note. When she was 12 years old, Otto was named a first violinist. Imagine, she was first at something. Shortly after, she and her 39 fellow musicians were invited to perform concerts in Catura and later in the nearby capital city of Asuncion. Word of this extraordinary orchestra spread. Soon they were asked to perform in other cities and even other countries. Ada and her friends flew on their first airplane, stayed in their first hotel, swam in the bright blue waters of Rio de Janeiro, sampled their first pastries and pineapple, and saw sights they never imagined. The world dazzled them just as they dazzled the world. When Ada was 16, the orchestra received a very special invitation. They were asked to tour with a world-famous rock band. More than 35,000 people awaited them at their first concert stop in Bogota, Colombia. Ada was more than nervous. She didn't know how to enter or how to greet the audience. She went blank. She saw a giant stand with glaring lights and heard people screaming. But she didn't have to worry. As the recycled orchestra took the stage, the people who had paid to see the rock band cheered for them. The enormous audience sang and swayed to the music as the orchestra played. 
and as their performance came to a close, a crescendo of cheers, chants, and applause resounded across the park. The astonished kids bowed, grinning at one another. They had discovered the surprise waiting in the landfill. Buried in the trash was music, and buried in themselves was something to be proud of. The world sends us garbage, we send back music, Fabio Chavez. Otto Rios' town, Catura, is the main garbage dump for the capital city of Asuncion, Paraguay. It is one of the poorest slums in all of South America. More than 2,500 families, 20,000 people, live there on less than $2 a day. They endure 14-hour days of picking through the trash in the landfill to find things they can recycle or sell. Officially, children aren't allowed to work in the landfill, but that doesn't stop them. Some of their families need their help. Whoever can carry something can work, said Ada. Generations of Ada's family worked in the landfill, including her father and grandmother. But her father later got a better job of sewing and embroidering clothes. Her mom worked as a caregiver for an elderly relative. Ada and Noelia could attend school, but as children, there were still long hours with nothing to do and trouble waiting in the wings. Then a newcomer came to town. Fabio Chavez was an environmental engineer sent to Catura to teach safety practices to the gancheros, working amid dangerous heaps of refuse. Laboring alongside them in the landfill, he befriended the recyclers and worried about their children. A musician himself, he decided to offer music lessons to keep the kids out of trouble. In time, Chavez's music class became an orchestra, aptly named the Recycled Orchestra. Concert invitation followed, but there were difficult roadblocks. Chavez discovered that the children didn't have the identity papers or even birth certificates required for travel. They had, legally, not been born. Chavez changed all that. Today, Ada and her friends have performed in concerts all over the world, in Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, England, Germany, Japan, Mexico, Norway, Palestine, Spain, the United States, and more. They have toured with the rock band Metallica and played for world dignitaries, including Pope Francis. Money from the orchestra's concerts goes back to Catura to help families rebuild their homes, their music school, and their lives. Not too long ago, we purchased a piece of land where we will build houses for 15 orchestra families, said Chavez. Ada has a new house there. This land is out of the flood zone. Their families will never again have to face the evacuation that displaced Catura villagers every year when the river rises. What started as a music class for 10 kids has swelled to orchestral rehearsals for 200 students with more than 25 instructors. Chavez quit his ecology job to work with the orchestras full time. Now plans are afoot to use the recycled orchestra's experiences as a model to help other children living on landfills around the world. Music allowed us to connect with other people. Without even speaking the language, we, other, we understand each other. Fabio Chavez. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Margaret Mead.